Shelf e today I'm gonna interview Marius Jacobsen, also known as DJ Metal Bastard. I have Hello. been DJing around Europe, it's right? Yeah, I've been DJing for about 15 years, amongst others in Berlin, professionally. So I, even though I started quite late in my DJ career, everybody wants to be a DJ these days, but uh, you know, gotta do something. It's nice. You know? And I'm coming from, I basically was born into the music scene, like literally. Uh, my father were, uh, was a renowned sound engineer, worked in big record companies and in a big studio at the time. Uh, so I have inherited his listening cap capacities. Uh, so I know, I guess I'm a, if, I, if I'm something apart from a DJ, I'm a listener and a observer, but I guess I'm also a, what do you call, music expert. That's what I've been told anyway by other music experts, so I guess I am. And that's why I'm here today, because also you have a great collection. Yeah, well, you know, this collection is actually fairly new, as I had to restart my collection as of 2005, due to my previous life not being that well, but uh, yeah, music is my life, so... I and how, you already told a little bit, uh, like, how you start your approach with music, Marius, but how you start your collection? You remember, like, your first vinyl that... Uh, you bought like, or something like that? Very first back in the day? Yeah, that was in around 88. Uh, first LP was, because uh, it was the only Kiss album they had, uh, Paul Stanley's old album. I was kind of going for Harder Than Hell, but the only one they had left was the Paul Stanley's old album at a local shop, this town at uh, Sofini, is near to here. Um, yeah, and I kind of liked it being, you know, I don't know, 10 years old or even younger. So that was my first album. My first 7-inch was Armin's Can I Play With Madness, which was new at the time. So yeah, that, those were my two first records. My, I even remember my two first CDs, if that's of uh, any interest. Of course, yeah, which okay. ones? Uh, that was also around the same time, actually, a little bit later. I started early with CDs. Uh, there was uh, Rock and Roll by Motorhead and Inside Electric Circus by Wasp. They were on nice price, you know. So, so your collection um, also is also basically more metal? Yeah, uh, even though it's a bit of a mix-up because records I have deliberately collect, uh, collect deliberately metal, punk, with some other stuff as well in there on vinyl and on CD I have everything else because I like a lot of different music. I told you to pick up like five albums that are more meaningful for you. So, yeah, uh, so let's start for it. the fifth. One to the first one. Oh, I don't have them in in any yeah, line. In, in, in line, so to speak. It's not a problem. You know, so I, we can just make them like in the order, like. I kind of thought of uh, mm -hmm. which 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 one I would start with. Um, if I don't remember, wrong. I will start with an album by a defunct band. I think most of them will be defunct bands. Band from that were ba that's, that was based in Canada, illegal. Really, really, really great hardcore ba band album. They only released this album in 2012. You can help me maybe to pronounce the title. It's a long title. Ah, it's El Aire Libre Fuera de los Dientes del Monstruo, Tirano y Cannibal. And it's in Spanish. It's like yeah. the air, uh, the free air outside the teeth uh, of the monster, of the, the tyrannic monsters and cannibal. Yeah, that's what I've been told similarly before as well. Yeah, it's a some title, huh? But uh, it's a really great. They were really influenced by early Spanish mixed with early Italian type of hardcore. Really, really good. I and this Canadian. Hmm? It's Canadian. Based in Canada, Canada. Bass player is Canadian. Drummer were Finnish. The guitarist American. Singer originally from Chile, I think. Ah, that's why it's Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Even though. He was an illegal immigrant in Canada, so he got kicked out during the recording or prior to recording of this album. So the vocals on this album were recorded in Berlin, where he escaped to. So they released only this full length, uh, along with the yeah, first demo, two seven inches before the album, and then a, a third seven inch just after its album, and then they broke up. Did a tour of Europe. I was lucky enough to see them together with a good friend of mine, both in Berlin and at the end of the Sun Festival in Prague, and they were amazing. There are guys that have been playing in many great hardcore bands forever and still play in other cool bands today. Uh, so that's an album that I feel that more people should check out. Uh, 
they are, because you see, the thing is with a lot of hardcore bands is that uh, they have like a DIY attitude and it's not a big deal, so bands fall apart as soon as they start, you know, so it's easy to forget about bands, you know, like metal, in the metal underground bands have a tendency to kind of go for the long run, you know, and keep on going, and, but in hardcore bands fall apart too soon, unfortunately, at some time, and this band were one of them, but an amazing album, I've been listening to this album so much. Uh, 2012 on a very really great label called La Vida S N News, a British based label, which is really, he's really grown to become a quite big DIY label these days and all the power to him because he's been really working hard. So I highly recommend an album and it means a lot to me because it's one of the best hardcore punk albums I've heard the last 10 years. Easily. So it's a must listen? It's a must listen, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really original, really intense, not really tika 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 pass, but really a lot of like, wild drumming and a lot of cool, a lot of cool bass lines and great everything. I mean it's amazing, I mean, great lyrics too. And a great fold out, classic punk, you know, fold out. The cover is so Yeah, nice. it's really like in the that DIY style, you know, you just put it out like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, cool, like the old days, you know. And then, yes, yeah. uh, the lyrics on the other side, uh, they might even be translated to English as well. Uh, it's been a while since I checked it. Yeah, this also translated to English, so. Really is cool. it busy? Hmm? Easy peasy. Yeah, easy peasy. So, and it's still quite obtainable. Uh, you know, it's out of print, but you can find it online for not much. So, this is the limited red vinyl version, but it can, I don't think it's expensive too. So, but it's only on vinyl, mm -hmm. you know, absolutely yes. worth checking out. So, first recommendation illegal from Canada. Yes, yep, really great band. Check them out and also check out. Related bands like Puramania and Spectres and Night People, After Bombs. I just have to mention some related bands, so check them out. Give out to some Canadian um, bands. So, nice. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Uh, the we? next one, Mari, what do you have for us? Will I move straight to the next one? Okay. I will move then over to a really old favorite of mine, uh, an American band, which you might know of even. Righteous Pigs. Righteous Pigs. A legendary grindcore band from the late 80s. Uh, as with other grindcore bands coming up from the late 80s, they had a completely unique sound, of course, just like Napalm Death, Carcass, Repulsion, Terrorizer. These guys were even slightly a bit different. They weren't as blasty as, say, Napalm Death or Repulsion, what have you, but still grindcore and not so much brutal, growly vocals, but really shouty and really fuck off attitude, like. <laughs> You know, I'm basically being kids at the time, you know, and funny thing is that they had to record the album twice due to an unfortunate accident, you know, classic case of somebody spilling a beer over the mixing console, you know, mm -hmm. and I've always been wondering how this album would have sounded initially, but I think this version sounds amazing, really like a mess, you could say, but just uh, perfect, you know, the, in other ways, uh, Live and Learn, the first album, they released a few demos prior to this, they were formed in 86. From, uh, from uh, Nevada, Las Vegas. Uh, the most known member here, guitarist Mitch Harris, went on to join Napalm Death, so, and he's still a member of those of Napalm Death as a guitarist. The other guys, I don't think, went on to form any serious bands, but one thing I know is that these guys recently reformed uh, only to do a few occasional gigs at festivals, and they actually sound amazing. So they're just still on the Yeah, just like touring, okay, like playing live occasionally. Well, last year everything has been on hold, as we all know, due to the plague, but, uh, you know, usually when old bands that hasn't been together for 30 years, when they get back together, this might sound good because they might have been playing in other bands and they're really well played, but these guys sound as raw as they did back then, so, I, and that's a positive thing, and the singer looks like he just doesn't care about anything, just like, you know, like a biker or something, I don't know, like, really cool. 14 songs, 20 minutes, straight to the point, and songs like I Hope You Die in a Hotel Fire, you know, and uh, <laughs> other funny song titles like Stool Softener, and I don't know, it's a, it's an amazing album. This is, uh, I think it's even been reissued recently, officially as well, not by Nuclear Blast, because this was one of the early signings to Nuclear Blast, which became a really big, known, extreme label, a major label by these days. By, by, but by those, those days, Nuclear Blast were basically your... Um, 
your uh, living room uh, living room underground label just like the other Central Media piece with on Eric you know German label of course uh, they release only one more album it's called Stress Related not as good I'm afraid it's only this I will recommend but this is such a great grindcore classic you can call it uh, I don't know if they really picked this cover or if the guy from Nicolas said oh take this cover you know <laughs> used to be like that in the, in the past. This is the Gatefold edition. You can also get it out with the lyrics, you know, you have photo collage, tanks list and whatnot. And this is also uh, the limited uh, green vinyl. Wow. It's cool, see-through green. Neon book vinyl. Video. And it sounds amazing, as vinyl used to do, especially back in those days. Um, highly recommended album and really underrated album within, yeah, not even the grindcore scene, but also the extreme metal scene or extreme hardcore scene for that matter. But an album more people need to check out, and it's not as expensive as it as I, I would believe it to be because these days old records of vinyl tend to be pricier than ever, you know. Yeah. But this isn't that bad, you know. So should absolutely worth checking out. This is an album that's dear to me. I've been listening to this album since, I don't know, summer 1990. So, and I will always listen to this album. Check it out, Righteous Peaks, Live and Learn, released in 1989. So, the next one. Next one. Third one. Third one, moving on. Uh, am I going to leave the tapes to last? Yeah. Uh, next one is also Colt release, Colt band. It's uh, unfortunately it's a bootleg because I don't have the official one, and this is a compilation too. Japanese band. No, it's not Antisect, but it looks like it. It's S D S S D S, and that stands for sometimes Sick Death Slaughter or Suicidic Death Slaughter, just like other Japanese bands. You know, they have the acronyms mean have different meanings. This is a compilation. Uh, this cover, this cover and this title is from the Split album with uh, American Misery, another legendary American crust punk band. And the uh, SDS side is called The Future Stay in the Darkness Fog. Oh. Gra not grammatically correct, of course, mm -hmm. which is <laughs> almost a tradition. And that's the A side, this is really heavy, epic, metallic crust in the vein of all British bands like Amoebix, Hellbusted. Uh, anti uh, sacrilege and discharge, of course, all of those classic British bands with a uh, uniquely Japanese touch with really deep growl vocals and really amazing guitar playing, a lot of great solos and flying V guitars and what have you not. The other side in, includes uh, basically material that was supposed to be released as a troll inch, which, which would be called Into the Void. But didn't get, uh, didn't really get to, to be released. Um, so it remains unreleased. It's only on this side of this unofficial bootleg. But it's uh, they have a double compilation CD which features everything they recorded. Plus this side from their split has been reissued along with the uh, as a the split album has been reissued officially just recently uh, wow. by Profane Existence and MCR from Japan who originally released this split um, album. I can check inside the album. There is an insert here of sorts with some lyrics to some of the songs, like classic punk style, you know, like for mm -hmm. like copy style, and post, yeah. you know, and just like uh, Antisect had like the song where they say Ghost of My Kind, it says Ghost of Antisect SDSR, <laughs> highly influenced by Antisect as you can tell by the cover, um, yeah, and uh, that's one of the logos, it says Sick Society, the slaughter here, somewhere. somewhere. So yeah, it's a really great album. I'm a big fan of Japanese hardcore punk in general, and also of course the more metallic crust bands from Japan. But hardcore punk from Japan in general is this is a pure because um, actually I'm not very familiar with like the Japanese uh, scene. I'm no. more familiar with like the Western musicians that play there. A lot of lives in Budokan or something like this. Oh yeah, yeah. You have many great live albums live at Budokan. Indeed, indeed. And I just. Before I forget, I want to show you something that where Antisect got their, well, where SDS got the code from. If I show you the original, ha! Ah. See? It's a, a little it's bit a, similar. Yeah, it's a tribute, so to speak. In or as as we say in rock and roll, it's all about stealing, you know. So. 
Now it's more as more as a tribute in this case, and you know, it's, you borrow a little bit here and borrow a little bit there, and it's all, it's all in good manner because these guys are hugely influenced by Altisect, even though they don't sound like an Altisect worship band, but they're uniquely Japanese and really great crust punk, metal, metal crust punk, I would say, yeah, really, really, really great. And even though I don't support bootlegging, uh, this is a cool compilation of sorts featuring their side with Misery and that unreleased Into the Void recording from the same time actually. Mm -hmm. So if you find it, pick it up, but I would prefer if you pick up the split album with Misery because again you get a half from this compilation and the Misery side which is also really great but different again of course. As I said you can also get like a lot of the other releases even though they're not in print of course and they can be a bit pricey. They did a handful of 7 inches compilation CD, a 10 inch EP <laughs> and of course a live video on VHS recording where they recorded their last show which is like which were really great if you can you can look it up on youtube and you can watch it really really cool now sds the future stay in the darkness fog which is actually their side on their split with misery but uh this is a compilation of that side plus into the void unreleased 12 inch from 92. nice yeah and uh, for the next one what you have for us you're already passing through like canada usa japan what's the yeah, next one we will Oh, go back to the States actually, even though mm. it will be Latino, Latino Americans actually to be precise. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, first, I will, uh, this is only on tape too, a uh, band called Zolua, uh, Fusion members involved in both in the Black Twilight Circle, which some of you might have heard of, and uh, East 7th Street Kids, as I call them, the, from the Latino punk scene in, in LA, which I've been following a lot the last few years. Uh, this is one of those bands, uh, this is the debut tape called uh, Kokulia, which means hate in some ancient Mayan language or something. They sing in Spanish, uh, this was released on their own Zolua records with uh, the cult Silencio Statico punk label, cassette label only. I think I have all of their releases. Uh, Futuring, it's a white blank pro tape. They're terrible at dubbing their tapes though, so don't expect great sound. <laughs> uh, Featuring as a, but this, as you said, you just can find on tape. Only on tape, yeah, and digital. It's available on the Bandcamp to buy or for free, maybe. Mm -hmm. Featuring the lyrics in Spanish only, uh, and some some small photos, track list, and the cool artwork here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, and really dark, but yet really cool type of lyrics. Uh, and as I said, it's really hateful. Uh, Fast, brutal, but pure DB cross punk. Uh, one of the most extreme or hardest, as you'd say, DB punk bands I've heard out there. And both 80s and 90s influences, even some bit of grind in there as well. I guess really fast, eight songs in nine minutes, the way it's supposed to be. But uh, really, really cool. They have two more tapes after this, and they were supposed to do a split tape uh, a couple of years ago already. But that didn't materialize, but this might be my favorite. It's either this or their third called Plata Upum, uh, which is also really great. Uh, but all of their three tapes are recommendable, I would say. But uh, really, really, really great. Also check out other bands like Blazing Eye. Hot tip, check them out. Uh, so Zulua, related band. it's a second. Zulua, yeah. yeah, David Tape, Kulua, Kokulia, sorry. And yeah. Uh, oh. Still available out there, and it's not that uh, expensive, even though it's out of print. Even though I think they will make new copies every so often. Yeah. I know those guys, right? But at last, uh, at last, I have at least? have some related, even though it's not the same music genre. It's related, of course. Uh, we will have something from the Black Twilight Circle, oh. a compilation, or we could call it even a four-way split, uh, called Desert Dances and Serpent Sermons including four of the, what used to be, four of the main projects from the Black Twilight Circle. One of them is still, of course, the main project because it's the founder, Wulang, uh, along with Shatang, which is no longer, more par no, no longer part of the Black Twilight Circle, as well as Arismenda, being one of the main projects too, but he's also no longer part of Black Twilight Circle. And a fourth, Kalatun, also not longer part of the Black Twilight Circle, so it's only, <laughs> the circle is broken. Unfortunately, really great. This is also available on vinyl and CD, released by Aina Offensive and Iron Bonehead in Europe. Uh, not much info on this. is white blank tape, but it sounds great. Um, it's out of print, but it's not expensive. Just a simple track list 
with the song titles uh, and as it says here West Western black metal and that's kind of what this is it's really unique it's really Western black metal kind of try to picture yourself like spaghetti spaghetti Western movies mixed with black metal it sounds funny but it works really really well really atmospheric four ten minute long pieces of music really and really unique I haven't heard anything quite like it even though Aris Menda has his own style, which can be, I don't know, influenced maybe originally by bands like Bursum and stuff like that, and later bands that sounds like Bursum and stuff like that, but um, really epic and really melodic, yet really yeah, unique in every way. Uh, Shatam features clean singing, uh, as opposed to screaming or growling, but uh, it works really well. Uh, and even flute, which I don't like in metal, but it works here. And even some organ and <coughs> acoustic instruments. Uh, <coughs> really, really, really recommend, recommend this compilation. Or anything by Black Twilight Circle, actually. At least the stuff they released up to now, which is yeah. a lot. <laughs> I have the entire uh, compilation, uh, entire collection. The uh, label is called Crepusculum Negro. Uh, originally a tape label, and they release all their stuff on tape, uh, with the exception of the two last releases, which annoys me because I'm waiting for the tape unusual thing to say, but anyway, a lot of the, the, the releases have also been reissued on vinyl and occasionally CD too. So, unique black metal, even though they wear their influences on their sleeves, as you say, really influenced by some 80s black metal, also Norwegian 90s black metal, or 90s black metal in general, late 90s, like fin Finnish black metal, and what have you not, and some other later credible black metal, which I don't know that much about, because yeah, I do a black metal, but I'm more 80s kind of guy, I'm early 90s anyway, but check this guy, guys out, I haven't had a kick on black metal as much as I have on these guys for many, many years, so there must be something there, man. Very nice, and yes, today actually I have a lot of tips, because when of this stuff I never heard before. Well, that's excellent, because yeah. I thought of maybe picking stuff that I feel more people should be able to listen to, or check out, even though uh, I could pick five other more known records, you know, that I always can talk a lot about, but I don't know, I just felt that these five records would be uh, something to talk about and something to try and spread to a wider audience, you know, which sure. is the point of it all. The point of me being a DJ and music expert and what have you. Know. And uh, uh, thank you so much for sharing, like it is it's interesting with album with us, okay. Marius. And uh, talking about a little bit about your work as JJ, mm -hmm. like for people that want to like to get in touch with you, to know more about your music, or to invite you for JJ, how to contact you? I have a DJ site uh, on Facebook, and it's basically DJ Metal Bastard. If you Google that, you will find me on Facebook, and you can book me, though I'm not always as uh, available as I as I wanted to. Uh, it's a bit uh, personal private issue there but uh usually i'm a i usually dj at a place called aya in oslo together with my best friend over there cc and we have a concept called the gospel of rock where we play all things rock we preach the gospel of rock you know all great rock music in every style and what have you not not so much extreme metal or extreme anything but a lot of cool stuff so that's you will find me or find us DJing at I and some other places. I also am um, part of uh, a local festival called Hellbotten, where I'm one of the resident DJs. We had to postpone this year due to the plague. So next year, hopefully, we will be back. Yeah, cross yeah. fingers. Cross fingers. And, um, about like your like vinyls and etc. There's uh, any place like Disco Dogs or uh, Emeo that uh, you want to like contact people that are also collector or like to change or to sell or to buy? I buy a lot of my stuff from Discogs, yeah, but uh, and also all to different distros throughout the uh, internet, you know, like mainly punk distros or metal distros, and but and also locally in in Oslo, where if I get the opportunity to do it, because a lot of the stuff that I tend to get into are really DIY stuff that don't make it all the way up to Oslo, unfortunately, so I order a lot of stuff from abroad. But uh, yeah, Discogs is one main shop, you can find anything there. You know. And there's a mail for contact you or just No, 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 I'm, I'm not like, I'm only there as a, as a buyer, I'm not in there to make friends, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just there to buy records or collect, so to speak, yeah. So, thank you so much, Tuzantak. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It's an honor. Metal Shelf! Woo!